everybody. Uh, my name is Uche. I am a responsible AI program manager. I'm Sandy Ritchie. I'm a, a technical program manager in the speech team at Google. And we're so excited to be here today to talk to you about our work in languages. So we've seen this a couple of times. Kat just showed this. But uh, I think it's worth repeating over and over. And I'm really excited to see all of the different projects that this is going to be applicable to. But uh, I want to start by saying to truly be, you know, I think to adhere to Google's mission statement, we need to break the language barrier. So note the mission statement. It's the world's information, right? The world's information is not in English, it's not just in Spanish, it's not just in German or French, it's the world's information, right? And to organize that, we need to first understand it, right? The second part, making it universally accessible, starts first with understanding. So, uh, I, I want to, and I'm, I'm embarrassing myself here a little bit. I am an immigrant. I'm an immigrant. I moved to the U.S. when I was about seven years old to Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Uh, it's, not, it's not that pleasant, by the way. It's freezing cold. Uh, and uh, I, you know, you can see me in the corner there, clearly uh, in the beginning of my baggy era. You can see my brother there in the front thinking he's tough. Uh, we, we, couldn't imagine a world having learned Igbo first and grown up as, the, as our first language where we'd be able to communicate and sort of like parse our information, receive our information in our language, right? You shouldn't need to have the opportunity, not everybody gets the opportunity to move to uh, a place where the dominant language is spoken, right, in the formative years of their life. Not everybody wants to move uh, to such a place. And here's the thing. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to do that. Imagine a world where everybody has equal access to their, the world's information in their own language, right? First, uh, imagine where the barrier, right, doesn't mean where you are or what you speak. The language comes to you. Let's talk about how we got here, right? So you saw my baggy era in 1997. How did we get here? So you'll see behind me. Then data was, it was expensive, right? Time, money, effort, and models could only really cater to one language. Now, we have multilingual models, right, that require less targeted data. They're less expensive to train. That allows us to do more with less. In the future, we'll have multimodal capabilities. So we'll be able to parse text and speech and images, oftentimes, all at once, opening us up to a new realm of communication. Now, uh, last couple of slides for me, I, I want to point out again, I am a responsible AI program manager here. And I want to talk a little bit about how we're making sure that as we do this, we're developing responsibly. We see that in sort of two parts. One, responsible development. What does that mean? We want to make sure for our languages that we're engaging in collaborative data collection practices. We want to make sure that when technological development is, is being done, we're not being presumptuous about what the communities need before we've had a chance to engage with them. We do that in a number of ways. But one, we have community advisory boards, right, where we get local guidance on what it is we're doing, where, where we're doing it, and make sure that we're establishing open channels of communication to make sure that it's both mutually beneficial for Google and our users. Lastly, we incorporate localized feedback, right? We incorporate feedback into model performance. So we want to test it with native speakers. We want to make sure that our models are efficient. We want to make sure that we are incorporating those findings back to our improved performance initiatives. The feedback loop here is just as, if not more important than the development itself. Beyond developing the core technologies, we also want to make sure that we develop tools that are community informed, right? So let's talk about what that looks like from a product standpoint. You'll see YouTube captions here, a landing spot for uh, a lot of the work that you and I do together. Uh, and so in YouTube captions, right, we want to answer questions like, how can users get the most out of that? A lot of that comes from better speech recognition. Let's talk about how that works in practice. See uh, a couple of stats there. Uh, hundreds of millions of people in the world are deaf or hard of hearing, right? YouTube captions addresses some of our challenges there. We can, uh, we can 
address bad audio quality, right? Um, just because somebody maybe didn't have the means to film something in you know, super legible quality doesn't mean that it's not good information. We account for that. Uh, allows for interaction with non-familiar accents, right? There are, you know, uh, Uche at seven or eight years old may not have been able to communicate with many folks because I had an accent, right? This addresses that. Lastly, it also allows us to abide by statutes for broadcasters, right? Broadcasting efficiency, also trust and safety measures, something that we take super, super importantly as, uh, as it, we generate captions. I'm gonna hand it over to Sandy uh, to talk a little bit more about this project from a language perspective. Thanks. Yeah. So yeah, um, a little bit about me. Um, these days I'm a technical program manager in the speech team, as I said, but in my previous life uh, I was an academic linguist. And global linguistic diversity is always something that's really inspired me and you know, uh, pushed me forward in my, in my work. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about this, this issue and this, the work that we're doing from a kind of linguistic perspective. So you know, first of all, just a, a, few, a few top stats. There are 7,000 languages spoken around the world today. Um, and of those 7,000, around half, so around 3,500 have a writing system. And a writing system is the oldest and still the best you know, language technology which exists because of its ability to allow us to preserve, pass on knowledge down, down the generations. Other language technologies have come about much more recently. So in the last few years, um, we've been working on um, text input and keyboard layouts so that you can at least you know, type your language in, into your phone. And that's available in 900 languages through our, our Gboard product. Um, beyond that, more advanced technologies like speech recognition, translation models, that kind of thing, are really only available in a few dozen languages at, at most. So our mission, the mission of our, our program and our, our particular project is to extend these technologies to 1,000 languages. And with those 1,000, if we, if we extend the technology to those 1,000 languages, we'll be covering something like 95% of the world's population. So how, how do we get there? Um, first, on speech, which is obviously the area which is closest to me, um, we're making a big investment in, in expand, expanding to more languages. So last year, we launched speech recognition for nine more languages of Africa, and hopefully many more to come in 2024. On translation, um, Google Translate has been making big investments in language expansion. Last year, they launched 24 more languages on Google Translate, and there are hopefully many more to come again in, in, next year. Finally, on NLP, I know a lot of the excitement is around LLMs these days, but you know, to, to highlight a few other areas that Google continues to invest in. So we're investing in areas like question answering, uh, uh, grammar checking, named entity recognition, various other things. And we're, we're always pushing to ex expand those technologies to more and more languages. But you know, yeah, as Vijay was saying, like, we're not done when we develop the technology you really need to go further and actually get that technology in, into our product ecosystem. So just to, just to highlight, you know, there are, there are hundreds of ways that we can do that, but just to hi highlight a few different ways. So you, know, you should be able to search for a video on YouTube and watch that video with captions or subtitles or even hear it respoken in your language. You should be able to hear driving directions on Google Maps in your own language. You should be able to read your email in your own language. You should be able to, you know, even, you know, this is possibly for the future, but interact with advanced technologies like Assistant and BARD in your own language. That's the scale of, of the problem that we're, we're trying to solve, to make this happen and to get comfortable with developing for a thousand languages. I just want to close quickly on a quote from our, our, found, uh, our sponsor, Jeff Dean, who's the chief scientist at Google. So he says that we're committed to building an AI model which supports the thousand most spoken languages bringing greater inclusion to billions of people in marginalized communities. And I think this is an important note to, to end on, that you know, many of these languages that we're talking about are spoken in some of the most dis disadvantaged areas of the world. And you know, uh, to go back to the, the mission statement, that, which, which I highlighted at the beginning, we're really not done until we you know, understand the world's information and make it universally accessible to, to people all around the world. Thank you. Thank you.